Welcome to Precision Weigh-In Balances. You can visit us on the web at www.balances.com or www.scaleman.com. Today we have a GP20K from A&D. This balance is 21,000 grams by a tenth of a gram. And we have some calibration weights. And these calibration weights, these are ASTM class 1 certified weights. And you'll see that the scale reads these are 5 10 kilogram weights. And the 5 10 kilogram weights weigh 10,000 grams or 9,999. You can see it's toggling back and forth. I also have for weights here some low cost. So these are expensive weights. These are about uh, $200 a piece. These weights, this is ASTM class sets. These are the low cost weights. We get these out of China. These are 5 kilogram and they're cold roll steel versus these other ones are stainless steel. So these are just steel weights and these are 5 kilograms each. And you can see as I place the weights on the scale that I have five, I have four 5 kg weights, and you can see the performance of this balance. It is right on the money. Now this weight here, this is an ASTM class one weight, and so this is 100 grams. And I take my 100 gram test mass, and you can see when I put them in the corners, the performance of the scale is spectacular. What I want to show you in this video is this particular balance has motorized internal calibration. So you can see that with 20 kg the balance is right on the money. Now the way I got the balance to be right on the money is I did an external calibration. I want to show you what happens when you use the motorized internal calibration. Because the calibration weights that are built internally, it's probably about a 600 gram weight, they use a lever based system. And so what one would do is zero out the balance, and to start the internal calibration, one just presses the cal button, and you'll see cal in. And as the balance is doing the calibration, it's dropping, dropping the internal mass. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner this arrow meaning it's storing the parameters at zero load. And then it goes out and when it drops the weight down, it stores the second value and then it says end. Now a minute ago, you just saw in this video how this scale was right on the money. What happens with the GP series is when you do an internal calibration, you walk over your last calibration set points. And you're going to be surprised, but I've done this a few times with this balance. Um, the balance is not going to be the same uh, tolerance uh, when you're using the motorized internal versus the external. So these are the same weights that we just had on. These are ASTM Class 1 weights, these are certified weights, they're 2 kilograms a piece, and as you can see, I have 2 kilograms on it, and it's off by 3 divisions, or 3 tenths of a gram. I put on another one, and now I'm off by 4 tenths of a gram. Put another, I'm off by 6 tenths of a gram, or 6 divisions. Put another one on, and I'm at 7 tenths of a gram off. So the motorized internal calibration does a good job. I mean, it's close, but if you really want optimal performance, you really want to do an external calibration. And what you want to do is you want to go into the manual, and if you ever do an external calibration, you want to block it so that you cannot do an um, internal cal. Because when you do an internal cal, it walks right over it. So right here in the manual on page 34, section 8, um, in this manual, it gives you the instructions for blocking the calibration. 
So again, if you're ever going to do an external calibration, which we highly recommend on the GP series, you want to block it out so that you do not use the internal cap. So here's five kilograms. Here's another one. And again, you can see even with these low cost weights, and now we sell these for about $100 a piece. We definitely recommend them if you buy a high capacity precision balance like this, the external weights. If you're um, an ISO or uh, ISO certified company, you're definitely going to need traceable weights. So that won't work. But these here are affordable. They're around $100 a piece. And you'll notice that I have four 5 kilogram weights on there. And now look at the balance. Before you saw it, it was right on the money. Now it's 19,998.7. So basically, division-wise, you're off by 13 divisions. So we'll now do an external calibration. Or how about this? We'll do one more internal cal so that you can actually see that the balance is off. So we'll do one more. You zero out the balance. That's off. You press the internal cal. And it's going to do the motorized internal calibration. And so you can see here it's storing the value with nothing on it. And then it flashes again and it's storing it one more time. So there's two points that it's storing. And there it is. End. It returns back to zero. So one more time, we'll just throw on these weights. Here's five kilograms. Here's ten kilograms. So we're off by seven divisions. Here's another five kilograms. So now we're up to, we have on the scale actually 20 kg. And again, we're off by 13 divisions. So the scale is very, very uh, repeatable we got to fix that accuracy. And the way we have to do it is through an external calibration. So, to do an external calibration, you need to press and hold the cal button down. And as you hold it, you'll see cal in, and then we'll see cal out. Then you release, and it says cal zero. And so, to start the calibration, if, if, if we wanted to, you can, on this particular balance, you can switch the cal weight required to either a 10 kilogram or a 20 kilogram. So if you press the print key here, we can start the calibration and it's storing nothing on the platform at all. It stores that set point. And now it's saying 10 kilograms. So we're going to put 10 kg on. And we'll use our higher quality calibration weights. These are class 1 weights. Very expensive, and they have a tighter tolerance. And so when we have 10 kilograms on there, we want to store it now. So to store it, we're going to press the print key. And you'll notice again that arrow in the upper left-hand corner, it's storing the value. It says N. We remove the weights. And once the weights are removed, the balance goes to 0, 0. Take those weights, put them on, and look at every time, right? We're right on the money. Okay. So you can see, doing an external calibration, you will get much, much better performance out of the balance. 10 kilograms is 10 kilograms right on the money. And now... One more time to just show you how internal calibration, uh, especially on high capacity balances, on balances like the analyticals, uh, you know, again, if you're ISO, you're definitely going to have to uh, do an external calibration. But once you get into this high capacity stuff, so now we're doing an internal cal again, and it's going to wipe out what we just did for an external calibration. And we'll put these weights on again. And I'm sure this video is going to show you that uh, the right way of doing a calibration on a high capacity balance is external. So now let's put these weights on one more time. Well, well that's pretty good on that one. Now we're off by three tenths. 
Now we're off by four tenths. Now we're off by six divisions. Now we're off by seven divisions. So, again, you can just see when I did the internal calibration, it stepped over my external calibration. So, again, what I'm just trying to, you know, highlight in this video is if you do an external calibration, you want to make sure you configure your balance so that nobody can do an internal calibration because if you do that, it's going to walk over those calibration parameters. So, again, let's stick on our 5 kilogram weights so that we can just go higher up in capacity. And, again, so we have 20 kilograms on there, and now we're off by 12 divisions. So, again, if I want to do, I mean, if I, if I want to be perfection, if I'm spending all this money for a balance, if I'm doing some kind of formulation, I want to be perfect. And to do so, again, let's do the external calibration. One presses and holds the cal key. Okay, when it says cal out, we're at cal zero. And let's this time change the calibration. So to change the cal weight, we'll press the sample key. It shows 5,000. I'm sorry, it's, it's flashing 10,000. On this particular model, you can either calibrate it with 10,000 grams or 20,000 grams. And so to change that, we're going to press the re-zero re -zero key, and now you'll see 20 there. And to store it, we have to store that parameter. So to store it, we're going to press the print key. And so now we're at Cal Zero, and again, we can start our calibration. So to start the calibration, one simply presses the uh, print key. And so again, in the upper left-hand corner, it shows Cal Zero. It's storing that value. This time, we've changed it to 20 kg. So now we need to put 20 kg on here. So put on 5, put on 10, put on 15, put on 20. So I have 20 kg on there. I just wait a minute. And now what I'm going to do is hit the print key. The print key will notice in the upper left-hand corner, that arrow, it's now storing that value in memory. It says end. I remove my calibration weights. Balance goes to zero. Put my cal weights on. performance of that. Balance is right on the money. And again, take my 100 gram weight put it in the corners and you can see this balance reads to a tenth and look at that. The performance is spectacular. But, we highly recommend that if you are going to buy a GP series, that you buy the external calibration weights if you want great performance. Now let's, one more time, you can see this balance performs excellent because we're doing an external calibration. But one more time, just to give you that example, we're going to do an internal calibration. And so when we do an internal calibration, we're going to walk on top of those calibration parameters. And if this can all be prevented if you go into the menu and block it so that you do not do internal calibration. So we hold it down. It says cal out. This is not what I want. I'm sorry. I want to do that again. I want to do an internal cal. So to do an internal calibration, we simply press the cal button. We'll see cal in.
during the parameters with nothing there on the platform. Now it's dropped the weight. It's storing the parameters with that internal calibration weight, which is probably about 700 grams. So they're using a lever. It's not the greatest uh, way to do a calibration, but again, it's an excellent feature to have internal calibration. But if you need absolute peak performance out of your balance, you really have to do an external calibration. So let's put these weights on one more time. And so you can see before that we're off seven divisions, we're off ten divisions, and we're off basically 13 divisions. And now you remember my 100 gram weight now, so we're going to put 100 grams on. And we're staying basically 13 divisions off. So, just one more time. We're going to do the internal calibration and we'll correct it. So, we're going to zero the balance. We're going to press and hold the cal key. There it is, cal out, we're going to store the parameters. So this time we're going to do it again with uh, 20 kg. Hold the print, press the print key, stores the value. It says 20 kilograms, let's put 20 kg on. We have our 20 kilograms on. Simply press the print key. Remove our weights. So you, there you have it. So this is our video on the A&D GP20K demonstrating that you are much better off doing external calibration than internal calibration. If you have any questions, give us a call. We're an authorized A&D dealer. We have precision weigh and balances. You can visit us at either balances.com or scaleman.com.